This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Today's call is that a walk-in freezer is not working. Now, they said the fans were running, but they felt like they weren't running correctly, like at low speed or something. They said just it sounds slow. Um, and then they said their product's all thawed out. Now, I did check the ice cream. Oh, I think it was in defrost when I walked up right now because they said the fans were running. So... Um, let me get some thermometers and uh, let's jump onto the roof and have a look up there since it's just turning on right now. We know the fan delay is working, so that's a good sign. We don't see any ice buildup, so that's a plus. That temperature controller is suspect because those pen temperature controllers are junk and they're never accurate. And it looks like it's set at zero and it needs to be negative 10 to be uh, proper ice cream temperature so we'll see but i'm gonna jump on the roof and have a look up there real quick uh, i came up onto the roof um the unit i don't see any major problems here uh, that's kind of a pain there you go uh defrost let's see it's 12 p.m time's a little off on the defrost clock there you go but it did just come out of a defrost nothing too crazy in here it looks decent um, sight glass is clear. It's a big Sporlin C all, nice and clear, so that's good. Uh, let's go down and look at that temp control. So I was walking away, I was just thinking too, make sure the condenser is clean. It's hard for you guys, watch well, I can show you here, but it's clean and I can feel air moving through it. So we're good on that and we're moving some good air from here. So I'm not worried about that. Can I see through it though is the question. Yeah, I can actually see through the condenser here hard for you guys to see it but I can see light so condensers clean I bet you anything their problem is that temperature controller let's go get a thermometer in there and see where it's turning on and off at all right it is about 22 degrees inside this box and let's have a look at this thermostat right here and see where it is that it is clicking at when I adjust it Wait a minute. Oh, that's correct. The fans have the low speed feature. See, I think that the unit was satisfying and they were seeing that, so. Actually, it's not that bad. It's just set for um, zero degrees. It's only about 10 degrees off. I don't know if that necessarily warrants replacing it yet. I set it down to negative 20, so that should be maintaining negative 10. I think that's their only problem of all things. Now, I'll talk to them about, I mean, we'll see if they want to change that thermostat. I bet you they won't. I bet you they won't. But actually, if you look at it, I need to make sure that sensing bulb is directed in the right place. It looks like it might be in the wrong spot up there in the top corner, so let me correct that real quick. I talked to them. They said just change it. So just put in new control be done with this so we're going to put in a digital so i'm going to go shut off the power to make it easy i'm just pulling this whole control out of the box we'll get it wired outside of the box into the new control and then we'll just mount it and run the power into the same knockout the only thing i need to make sure is that i can't i gotta remember how i hooked this up when we installed this equipment now this thermostat came with the equipment so that's why we used it i really don't like using those um, but it goes right here. There's a little bit of ice buildup too. I'll get that knocked off. Uh, we'll probably disconnect the two speed fans too because I'm surprised they lasted this long. Um, but yeah, it was just I just cut it right here so that way I'd know where everything went. It went from R to N. So they're just breaking the common or the N terminal. Um, okay, yeah, I just gotta look into that and make sure I get all that stuff right. All right, I got it wired in. Um, I went in and taped the wires because I just used three wire cord, right? That has a ground, a neutral, and a black, or green, black, and white. And I just re identified them. So red is uh, my um, in terminal, right? Line two. Black is line one, blue is my switch to like. And then I went ahead and disconnected that two speed relay because it's gonna be a problem. This thing's constantly, they'll still be a problem because there's a, they, they tend to short out in the motor too. 
but I disconnected the two-speed relay. That actually gave me terminals to put everything on because I ran out of terminals in here. So now I just need to get a pump sprayer. We'll get this little bit of ice out of here and then we'll get this guy turned on and tested. Uh, thermostats mounted over here. We used a digital. So um, just a KE2. Now we're not gonna do defrost with it because this is electric defrost. So it's gotta use the defrost clock on the roof or you have to use a special controller from KE2 which I have, but anyways, that's a whole nother thing. So we're just gonna use the standard uh, digital control, turn off the defrost, and the control is gonna lose power when it goes into defrost, which is fine. So, and then it turns back on, it'll take you know 20 seconds to load up and then click, it'll click on, close the solenoid valve and start the system up. So we should be good. So like I said, I need to get this ice out of here real quick. All right, now there's no need to get a hose just for this little bit of ice. It's just some residual stuff that the defrost isn't taking care of. So I'm just using my pump sprayer that I got right here. Just threw that up there with some hot water. Just melt it, it'll just take a few minutes. We'll get it all melted and then we'll test fire this thing and hope that nothing blows up. All right, so this guy says about 31 degrees. Give it a few minutes, get some air moving. As soon as this temp control, we gotta set it too. Actually, yeah, so it's not gonna run yet. I gotta get up there and set it. There we go. It just came on. And we set it for negative 10. Differential, we're gonna set it for three. Compressor starts per hour is off. Defrost per day is zero. And the rest is alarms. Defrost time, turn that down. Zero. Now we're just waiting for the fans. That's alarm, that's alarm. TAD, address. T5, negative 10. Differential three, everything else is off. Compressor starts per hour, defrost per day. Defrost time, we're good. So this guy's ready. It's 39 degrees in here. We're just waiting for the coil to get cold enough. There we go. Turned on the evaporator fan motors. And they're on high because we have them set for high now. Um, yeah, so the evaporator fan motors are controlled off of the defrost termination fan delay that's inside there. So now we're just gonna watch this guy come down and temp. Make sure everything else is good. All right, so it's about 16, 17 degrees in here right now. It's coming down. Don't see any real issues. We're gonna jump on the roof, make sure it's still got a clear sight glass. I really don't see the need to put service gauges on this system because it was clearly just a bad temperature controller. Um, all their food is thawed in here, so it's gonna take hours for this box to get down to temp. Their ice cream is just liquid, so it'll be a bit. But uh, yeah, let's jump on the roof and have a look at the condensing unit one more time. All right, this is that one that I made a short form video on where it just had like one thing after another. It had just a bad fan motor and then proceeded to turn into chaos as I changed the motor. So yeah, that was fun. All right, this right here is their freezer. Uh, still got a nice clear sight glass. Everything looks good. Again, we're not even frosting back to the compressor because it's only 16 degrees in the box. It's got to get a little bit colder. Uh, it's getting there though. It's going to take some time, but like I said, I really don't see the need to put it on service gauges. I'm uh, going to watch it for a little bit longer and uh, probably just tell the customer to uh, keep an eye on it. Sometimes it's just as simple as a temperature controller or a power switch or, you know, sometimes it could be easy. It's important not to let your guard down. Don't assume that's all that's wrong. Uh, in this situation though, I really didn't see anything else going on. The service call was that the walk-in freezer wasn't working. It had happened over the weekend and they waited until after the holiday. Uh, we had Labor Day on Monday. Today is now Wednesday, September 4th. So um, I think it was Labor Day. Yeah, I always mix up Labor Day and Memorial Day, but I'm pretty sure it was Labor Day. Um, with, uh, do you guys do that too? Let me know down in the comments. I'm always mixing up Labor Day. It's not that I don't, appreciate Memorial Day, the significance of it or anything like that. It's just, I always mix up the three day weekends. One's be beginning of summer, one's end of summer, but eh, anyways, customer called. They said that over the weekend, they noticed the walk-in was the freezer was temping a little high. Um, things were thawing out. Ice cream was, you know, not as, uh, excuse me. Oh, it's been a long day. I had an early morning this morning. Um, sorry. Let me know in the comments if I made you yawn too. 
so once I got out there, I kind of investigated everything. I didn't see anything major. There was no ice, you know, blatantly present on the back of the coil or anything like that. And the temperature controller, right when I saw that pen temperature controller, I was like, man, those things are always messed up. Like they really are not quality. They used to be in the late eighties, early to mid nineties, even early two thousands. Those things were awesome. In the last 10 years though, they have become pure junk, like pure junk. They ship them with the, the, the coils that are like pre set up with TXVs and solenoid valves and everything from the manufacturer. And I'll use them because that's what the customer purchased. Uh, but man, any chance I get a chance to change them, that's what I do. And that was what I did in this situation. So diagnosed it as being about 10 degrees off, uh, talked to the customer. I didn't think they were going to do it, but they went ahead and said, just get it done. So, okay, cool. Went back with the digital because the digital will last pretty much the life of that coil unless something significant happens to it. They just work. And on the digital, if the sensor goes bad, you can get just the sensor. It's no big deal. Now, something to think about, too, when you're installing these temperature controllers, that is a medium temperature air defrost digital temperature controller from KE2, okay, or Kita Therm. But there's no reason why you can't use it for a freezer. You just have to understand and know how to wire it up. So I wired it up to break the solenoid power. So it breaks power going to the solenoid valve, which essentially pumps the system down. Okay, when it gets down to temp, then when it comes up in temp, it closes power, energizes the solenoid valve and starts the refrigerant flowing through the evaporator coil. Now, the refrigerant flowing through the evaporator coil has an effect on the coil. It starts to get cold. Okay, and the evaporator fan motors are then controlled by a defrost termination fan delay switch. It's a combo switch. I think on this one, it's a three wire. So whenever the evaporator gets below a certain temperature, it closes a circuit to the evaporator fan motors. Uh, it also will close a circuit to the defrost termination if during defrost, the temperature inside the box gets too warm and it'll close a circuit and send power up to the defrost clock that terminates the defrost. So in this case, uh, change the temperature controller, put the digital one in. Now, something to understand is when this unit goes into defrost, that temperature controller will go blank. And then once it comes out of defrost, the temperature controller will be energized again because the temperature controller gets energized from the number four terminal uh, from the defrost clock at the terminal board down at the evaporator. Um, and that is the refrigeration circuit when it's not in defrost. And then the defrost clock will send power to the number three terminal when it's in defrost. That is the heater circuit. OK, um, so it, nothing too complicated, right? Now, in this situation, I took a shortcut. I decided not to put service gauges on this system. Now, that is a decision I was willing to make, understanding the variables that were at play. I didn't see the need to put any service gauges on there. Customer's been happy. Hmm. Excuse me. Like I said, it's been a long day. We did a uh, ice machine install today. So uh, I think I left the house at like 5.15. And uh, we had a crane meet us out there, lift up two Manitowoc condensers on the roof, and then it was an eight-hour ice machine change. We changed two condensers, a bin, two evaporators, uh, redid some of the line set. We didn't run a whole new line set, but then we had to do drains. Just It was just a lot of work. Water filters, all that good stuff. In an operating kitchen where there's people all around us moving, you know, lots of moving parts. So it was a long day to say the least. Um, but hey, I'm here making the video. You know, these videos can't always be like crazy, complicated, hour long videos because that's not what I always do. Sometimes I go out to this. Now, this particular call, um, I actually had somewhere to be. It was my anniversary that day. This was uh, filmed yesterday on September 3rd, and it was my anniversary, and I was planning on going somewhere else before or before I headed home uh, to go run another call, and then this emergency walk-in freezer came in, so I ran on down to this location, which was about an hour away from my shop. Hmm. I apologize, man. Uh, this was about an hour away from my shop. I went out there, found the temperature controller, went ahead and replaced it. And again, like I said, didn't see a need to uh, put service gauges on it. Customer's been happy. We called the follow up today. Everything's good. So that's it. I really appreciate you making it to the end of the video. If you haven't already, please consider checking out my website, hvacrvideos.com. We have merchandise available on there, hats, beanies, sweatshirts. Um, this is my uh, flex fit. It is a black underbill, see-through material. It's kind of hard to explain, but I can see light through it. It's a active wear hat, so um, it 
you don't sweat as much because again, it's not a trucker hat. It's so interesting to explain, but I can see light through this hat right now, but you, it doesn't look like it, you know? So it's not mesh on the top necessarily, but that black underbill was a really important thing. When I designed this hat, we have the HVACR acronym. Now I purposely did that instead of putting my logo on there because I wanted these hats to be, um, potentially worn by you guys when you're at work and you know some places this still will violate a uniform policy but a good majority of the people that buy these hats they're still able to wear them at work because it's not advertising a brand per se it just says hvacr the heating ventilation air conditioning and refrigeration acronym right so yeah again check those out on my website hvacrvideos.com we also have flat bills and dad hats and a couple other things on there too um so uh, a couple other ways to support the channel if you're interested in doing so. You know, the easiest way to support this channel is literally just watch the videos from beginning to end. That is the easiest way. You can also support it via the website by buying merch. You can go to uh, PayPal, Patreon, or YouTube channel memberships. Those are all different ways to make a monthly commitment to the channel. Um, last but not least, you can go to truetechtools.com. If you're interested in purchasing any tools, go check out truetechtools.com and I have an affiliate program set up with them. So if you use my affiliate code, big picture, one word, uh, at checkout, there's a space for an offer code. Uh, you'll get an 8% discount on majority of the items on their website and then I get a small commission from that. So another great way to help support the channel. I really do appreciate you. Thank you so very much and uh, we will catch you on the next one.